Hello and welcome to this video on a unification algorithm for Hidley Milner types. In previous videos we've looked at substitutions which are basically sets of mappings. We've also looked at Hindley Milner types, uh, specifically monotypes is what we're going to be dealing with in this video. And we've also looked at how those substitutions apply in type systems where we're going to be mapping from type variables to monotypes. We also looked at unifying substitutions and unifying substitutions in the context of type systems. These are substitutions where we've got two values, a and b, uh, and when we apply the unifying substitution to both a and b, we get the same result. So given all that, uh, we can basically define this uh, unification algorithm. This is the type signature, as we expect, it takes two monotypes because uh, we're dealing with, with types. We're trying to join these kind of types up um, or merge these types together, merge all their type constraints, and it's going to return a substitution and that's going to be the unifying substitution, which when we apply to a or b uh, should give us the same result. So there's three main chunks to this algorithm. We're going to go uh, through them in detail in a bit. But basically the first chunk deals with the case of type variables and what we do if there's a type variable. The second chunk is uh, somewhat simpler because unify is commutative. Uh, we kind of exploit this to not have to write some other if statements um, and deal with type variables there. Um, and finally, we deal with type function applications, uh, which is the only other case uh, that we have, and we unify those. That's what our algorithm looks like. So let's go, go back through again, uh, more slowly this time, and figure out what is kind of each line doing. So first, the type variable case. If it's the case that A and B are the same thing, uh, so we're kind of unifying uh, for no real reason because they're already the same, uh, well, in that case, we don't need to really do anything, so we just return this empty substitution back. So the next thing we do is we check if B contains A. Uh, so B might be a type function application, um, and we want to check that A isn't contained in it. Otherwise, we get this problem where we're generating infinite types, uh, which is going to make our type system sad. And so we'd throw an error saying that Nakai's check failed, and uh, this would probably be bubbled up to the programmer saying, hey, there's probably some logical error in your code here. And finally, if B doesn't contain A, uh, well, in that case, it's safe to map A to B. And we do that because we've just got a type variable, and it's got to match the other thing, so we may as well make them match. Jumping down now to the uh, type function application case, the first kind of two blocks deal with the case that either of them are a type variable so they have to both not be type variables and the only other thing for a monotype to be is a type function application. So if they're different type functions, so that's the case for example that we saw where one is a list and the other is a function, uh, well in this case they're not going to unify because they're structurally different and so we throw an error saying hey these are different type functions, this is maybe an error you might see in a programming language where it says you know expected a list but received a function, something like that. Provided that they are the same type functions, what we're going to do is we're basically going to iterate through all the different arguments, um, so all the different things that are passed to the type function. So for example, for the function type function, this would be the kind of input and output for the function. For the list type function, this would be what are the elements in the list, etc. And we're going to check that each kind of pair of type function arguments uh, so that are, that are in the same place. So for example, if you had a tuple, that you check that the elements at the same places in both tuples uh, basically unify uh, each pair. Um, and then we're also going to combine these substitutions together. And as we're doing that, that's going to collect up all our different type constraints and make sure we're consistent throughout that type function application. And finally, once we've collected all those type constraints, we're going to return that substitution back up. It is a complex algorithm, and you might have to stare at it a while uh, and really think, how does this work? Does it work? Um, test it on a few examples. Uh, it also might not be the most efficient algorithm out there. There are lots of different unification algorithms. There's a lot of research done on them to uh, make them faster. There is a linear time algorithm. And obviously, if this is a key part to your compiler or type checker, it's pretty important that it is efficient, especially if you're running it over large code bases. You might also be wondering, hey, OK, I can understand the pseudocode, but how close is this to actual implementation? And actually, it's very, very close. It's written in an imperative style, and so we can convert it into an imperative language pretty easily. Here it is in TypeScript. And yeah, this is a fully working TypeScript function, which basically does our unification. It calls a couple helper functions, but none of them are doing anything too crazy. Often you'll see unification algorithms uh, defined for and written in a functional programming style. Uh, I think that's because a lot of the research, obviously, around Lambda calculus is all around functional programming. So hopefully this gives you a slightly different perspective on uh, how you could write and define these algorithms. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.